Hello everyone! In the Houdini for Groomers course, we will learn how to use Houdini from a groomer's perspective. And it's not a secret that Houdini is one of the most challenging softwares to learn. Still, with this tutorial, we aim to reduce the difficulty of learning it for groomers. We will compare the characteristics between Action and Houdini, starting from the UI. We will analyze the construction structure inside of Houdini, and we will create groom setups with the essential tools matching the process with Action and Maya. This will be only for fur, and the user will understand the basic principles of Houdini, but we will focus on a groomer experience to drive the learning curve. In this tutorial, we will learn how to import and handle the models, how to create a groom or description, the basic guide generation and guide work, how to read and understand the attribute types, basic groom techniques. We will compare the action tools with the Houdini tools not to find out which one is better, but with the mindset of giving the user the knowledge to migrate its workflows and achieve the maximum effect with a minimum effort. The Houdini for Groomers tutorial is not going to be a groom tutorial, and we are not going to start with a model and end with a groom. Instead, we will focus on the workflow and techniques for groomers and how to make it work properly within industry standards. There are two lines of thought that we can have for a groom. The first one is the basic line of thought that will be the one that Houdini has built in. If you go in the Houdini UI, we have the context menus. So we have everything that is related to the parameters. Or if you are in Maya, you will know this as your attribute editor with a little bit of the channel box, but mostly the attribute editor. If you are here, this will be probably how you will call. It's a mix of the outliner and the node graph. So if you are used to your note editor, the moment that you create something in Maya, you will see the connections and you will see pretty much everything here. Your note editor will be your OBG note editor. The difference here is that our note editor is a compilation of everything that is on the scene, while ours here is based on context. So we have one level that is above this level this is the lower level and the objects or nodes that you put and the content will be divided into different nodes or different contexts. That will be the channels, the images, the materials, the objects, the outs, this one out. Uh, it's a different concept that you will see uh, from the normal DCCs or the standard DCCs. And the out concept will be everything that takes data out from Houdini and creates another thing. So you can take an out as an Alembic export, as an OBG export, you can export images, you can export data, you can export anything that will be taking data from Houdini and sending it out, it will be an out. We have the shop that it's like different compilations of objects, the stage that I don't really remember what it is, uh, Houdini is huge and the tasks that will be something for the top network to iterate. Most of the things that we will work and the only two that we will see, we could expand to materials, but I doubt that we will get to rendering materials on this series. But what you will see fully, it's the out and mostly the object context. The object context will be where we put everything. So everything that we do will be inside of the object context. This one, will be your 3D view. And the 3D view has a big difference with anything that we build. Why? I will explain it now, but we will see it later. I think it's the biggest problem that you have when you arrive into Houdini. Everything that you do, it's inside of the object context, right? There are different types of objects that you can use, but the one that we normally use the most is the geo. So the geo container, that is another level. This geo container can be pretty much anything because Houdini is modular and you can take it as a different complete group of objects where you can generate things and they can communicate between everything. The thing is that you can have multiple geo containers and you can have them visible at the same time or not. And this visibility normally 
can be controlled from here. The problem is that sometimes you don't want to see something from here, but you want to see something from there. Or you're inside of this one and everything else disappears. Or you're inside of this one and everything is visible, but you don't want this one to be visible. This is where it gets a little bit tricky to navigate and to know which one are the states, how to make that the one that you're inside is the only visible without seeing anything outside, or that you just want to see some outside, or you just want to see the ghost image of the ones that are outside. This is, for me, or was for me, the biggest hurdle that I got into navigations. There were problems that I had that I couldn't know what was happening, and it was because I had a duplicate of the mesh. Let's say that this sphere existed at this level, and then I imported this sphere at this level. I was trying to paint something here and I could not see anything. And it was because what I was seeing was this one while I was inside of this one. So see, some things like that can happen. So that was a mess, but I will explain a little bit better. You have the normal UI. Normally the shells will be custom to what you're using. If we are just using Groom, you will probably just exist in hair utils and in guide properties. They will be friendly for the first times that you work with Houdini because it's easier to work here as we are more used to that coming from Maya than going here and creating the things and the notes with tap. The better you get, the least you use these ones. Some of these notes will create a set of notes inside and some actions that you don't really need. Another thing will be the navigation and the selection. The selection is also tricky, but we will see it in a further tutorial. The one that I will tell you is show all objects, ghost, other objects, or hide other objects. This one affects just when you're inside of something. Again, to recapitulate, we have the object context. We have all the different contexts that we can work on, but we will mostly work with these three and most probably just with object when we are grooming. We have the different shelf that comes with Houdini, but for grooming, we will probably just exist with this too. The way that the other shelves exist is Houdini is super big and we will probably just try to create things with the tap menu. So you hit tap and you create. Then you have the selection options that are pretty normal, but they can be tricky sometimes and the right side options that we will start seeing them alone when we are looking into the tutorial. So this was a basic introduction to what the UI is, parameters, notes, 3D, and shells. Options, normal options, visibilities, how to see the mesh, how to divide our views, and the different groupings that we will use. I will stay with the basic view, not because it's good, most things will change a bit, and for grooming, it's better to have the parameters on the right and the node on the left, just because it's easier to navigate the long networks. So this will be the whole tutorial. We will change it on the next tutorial and see you in the next one. So you have different ways to import a model. One of the ways it's file. So you create a file node. Again, you can create it from the outside or a file from the inside it will create your geometry node with a file node inside. From this, you can call your model. It is going to have a basic geo there, but you can call the model that you want. For example, if I go to my documents, awesome model here. So my Fox model, that's how you import it. Now there's going to be some issues with this Fox model. The moment that I show the information, you can see that we have 75 primitive, 75 points, 75 vertices, and a lot of groups. This is the structure that we had for Maya. The points and the primitives and things, everything is one, but you can see packed Olympics. So what's happening? Remember that I told you that a primitive can also be a packed amount of things. So what we have here is that each group is packed as a primitive. What you can do, and this is where it's different, if you use a file, you have to unpack 
things. So you add a note that it's called unpacked because if things are packed, you need to unpack them. And you can see how it changed from being shaded and I can just select each of the areas. So I can just select the teeth or just select the body. Oh, looks like my teeth are actually single things. Well, that's interesting. And if I unpack, you can see that right away we have faces. And the moment that I try to select them, we don't really select the faces. Why? Because we have the faces, we have the points, but the primitives are, st are staying the same. It's telling us that the primitives are steel groups, which if we run a second iteration, it's still the same. How do we do this to manage things better? Well, if it's an Alembic, that is one of the best formats to bring information in, you can just go import, I copy it, control C, control B. You can import visibility, right? Your model. And inside of the same Alembic, you can just say unpack the late load primitives. The moment that you do this, you have everything, you have your primitives. You can tell it how to group the things how to handle the data. And the moment that you do this, you just need to add one last thing, a convert node. In the moment that you add your convert node, you can see that your primitives stop being primitives. That is a weird thing that Houdini uses to handle things. And they start behaving as full objects, the ones that you're used to from Maya. That was the reason why I added this little guy here on the sphere to show you that the primitives are going to be always there for you. But when you're working on Groom, more specifically on Groom, you probably need this. What's the problem now? If I try to select, double click will select me the object and one single face. So there are processes that are going to be better to do before converting. And there are processes that are going to be better to do after converting the mesh. So this will be all for this one. Now we can handle, we know how to import, we know how to export. No, not yet. To export, remember that I show you the Alembic out or the, that I told you that the out was to export. Everything that is called ROP is to export. And the ROP Alembic is where you export things. You just put the path and save the disk. And this will save and export whatever data you have here. Just remember that the non-commercial version doesn't let you export things. So this was everything for this tutorial. I hope you like it.